Charles Gasla. Okay, this one is directly related between volume and temperature. Kind of cool. And this is really fun to see. If you li live somewhere cold, um, this is a really good visual. You'll, you'll actually see this. Okay, let's do a little bit of review. So Charles Law is V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. V, of course, is volume, T is temperature. So put important notes on this. In all of our gas laws, when you have temperature, we always have to use Kelvin. We're using the Kelvin scale. So absolute zero, zero is going to be that negative 273 Kelvin, uh, but we're not going to use any negative numbers. That's why we have to use um, that Kelvin scale. So I put a star here. If you're taking notes, I want you to have confetti shoot out of your notes. I want alarms to go off to remind you, you always have to use Kelvin. One of the biggest mistakes that students will make is that they will forget to convert to Kelvin, have everything else perfect, but that you'll use Celsius. So huge. Anything with gases, you've got to go to Kelvin. All right, volume, you can use any unit. You just have to be careful that you're using the same unit between the final and the initial conditions. So V1 and V2, doesn't matter what they are as long as they're the same unit. So they could be mils or liters. You just have to have mil and mil. Um, pressure in this situation is going to be constant. So pressure is held constant. Um, notice as volume increases, temperature increases. So as I mentioned at the beginning, these are directly related and equally true as volume decreases, temperature decreases. So here's the visual for you. I want you to buy a balloon in a grocery store, okay? Room temperature in the grocery store. Now it's going to be cold outside in the winter. Take that balloon outside and what you're going to see is the balloon begin to sink like this. The temperature decreased as you went outside in this cold winter. Um, and so the volume decreased, those gas molecules get closer together. Kind of interesting. It's fun, it's fun to see and you go, ah, chemistry, Charles Law. Now, be really careful solving for temperature. Um, if you're given a question where temperature, um, where they want temperature, common mistake. Students will solve for temperature, but leave it in the denominator. You have to have temperature in the numerator when you solve for it. I'm going to do this for you right now. Um, so I'm going to say that we're looking for a final temperature, okay? First, I'm going to show you the mistake that students will make. This is what they'll do. Like, oh, I've got to get temperature, uh, T2 by itself. So they multiply each side by one over V2. Okay, so just divide each side by V2. V2 cancels and they end up with this. I'll write it over here. They will get one over T2. Okay, so there's my T2 equals V1 over V2 T1. But here's the mistake. They'll say, oh, I'm solving for T2. They'll erase that and go, oh yeah, there's T2 by itself. Or just make the mistake and not realize that it's still in the denominator. Um, so be really, really careful when you're solving for that T2. This, okay, if you ever find yourself in this situation, do you remember from math the easy way to fix that? You've got to get the T2 in the numerator. You just reciprocate both. You'll end up with, flip both of them, T2 equals V2 over T1 divided by V1. So if you ever end up with what you're looking for in the denominator, just reciprocate both sides. Now, if I were solving for T2, let me show you the algebra because sometimes students stumble on this. How to get that T2 in the numerator, how I would do it. Got V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2, like this. So um, I would actually multiply both sides by the T2 to get it in the numerator, times T2 times T2. So if we rewrite this, I'm going to have T2, V1 over T1 equals, <coughs> excuse me, V2, <coughs> because notice that T2 cancels. Okay, nice, I have the T2 in the numerator, and that's what we need. Then I've gotta get the T2 by itself. We need to um, isolate itself for it. So I multiply both sides by T1 over V1, check it out, so that those cancel, and over here times T1 over V1. So V1 cancels, T1 cancels, and T2 will equal the V2 T1 over V1. And then you can do your plug and chug. So just from years of experience, if students are going to make a mistake, two mistakes that they'll make, 
they'll forget to convert to Kelvin number one, and number two, they won't algebraically solve for T2 correctly. So just be careful on that. I'm trying to save you some grief. Okay, so I put up an example here. We have a balloon, it is 45 liters, and we're at 25 degrees C. The temperature is going to decrease to negative 10 degrees C. We want to know what's the final volume. So let's pause. Because this is a direct relationship, I want you to predict what's going to happen to that volume. So the temperature is decreasing. Remember, as temperature changes, um, the, excuse me, temperature changes, the volume changes the same way. If the temperature decreases, then we would predict the volume will also decrease. This would be a really good example of, I buy a balloon in the store, go outside, it's really cold. If it's colder outside, temperature decreases, the volume decreases, so we'll see it. All right, notice I labeled everything. That's always where I begin. Now, at this point, I gotta get my right units before I plug into the formula. So let's go ahead and add the 273. Now, if you're in my honors class, just do 273. If you're in my AP class, I want you to do the 273.15. So it depends on the teacher and the class. Let's add these together, and I'm going to get 298.15 Kelvin and 263.15 Kelvin. Okay, so now I have the right unit. And I'm going to be liters here. I just know my final answer will be in liters. Okay, I've labeled so I can tell I've got to use Charles Law because we have initial final conditions for volume and temperature. Let's go ahead and write this out. V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. And I want to solve for V2. So let's multiply both sides by T2. And we will get V2 equals V1 T2 over T1. Now, here's the fun part. It's a plug and check. Uh, so V2 is going to equal T1. There's my 45 liters times the T2, which was 263.15 Kelvin, divided by my T1, which was 298.15 Kelvin. Always look at your units. Check it out. Kelvin and Kelvin cancel. I'll be left with liters. Great. That's what we wanted. We wanted liters. Um, so when you multiply these two numbers, 45 times 263.15 divided by 298, I have two sig figs all through here. We are going to get 40 liters will be the final volume. And was our prediction correct? Um, temperature decreased, we predicted volume would decrease, decrease, and went from 45 to 40. Indeed, it did decrease. Okay, nice. A um, couple of other videos to watch along these lines, Boyle's Law, Gay-Lussac, and the Combined Gas Law. Good work. Have a great day. Thanks.